Today we'll be deriving the rotational inertia of a disk, and the disk is going to be um, of uniform mass density. So um, I'm going to just tell you what the answer to this is in case that's all you want to know. and You don't want to see the der derivation. The, um, to get the rotational inertia of a, ma of a disk of mass m and radius r um, about an axis at its center, it's just going to be i is equal to one half m r squared. So um, if this is the disk that you're talking about, then and there's the axis right there, right there, then we're deriving how sluggish this is to rotate about that axis. So not, not about um, this axis or um, any other crazy axis, just this, just this axis right here, that axis. Like my pen would be the axis. All right, so um, let's go about doing that. What we're going to do is we're going to use this equation again. This is the basic equation for rotational inertia. And uh, just to remind you that to get the rotational inertia of three ma point masses, when you know their distances from an axis, an arbitrary axis, um, and um, assuming that the, the, the rod that connects them all together is negligible mass, um, then the I is just going to be M1 times x1 squared plus m2 times x2 squared plus m3 times x, um, x3 squared. So you just add those up. By the way, if the mass does, if, there, if the rod does have mass, then you just add one more term that um, you might get from a table of, uh, of rotational inertias. All right, so let's get started with this. So here is my, here is my, disk of mass m, uniform mass distribution. It's distributed throughout the entire thing. And um, it's a radius r. Incidentally, if this, if this mass is all at the edge, if this is a hoop, then it would just be i would equal mr squared because all the mass is a distance r away. So it would just be mr squared. Um, but um, this is spread out, and so we're going to have to figure out, like, how do you handle something, a case where the mass isn't um, at a particular point, but it's spread out. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, draw, I'm going to draw in a um, thin ring. I know this doesn't look thin, but imagine that the thickness of this ring, like this, this thickness right here between here and here, is dr thin, like infinitesimally thin, dr thin. dr is like a change in r that goes to, um, we're going to let it go to zero. It's going to approach zero. And so um, let's say that this ring is out there a distance r, little r. We're going to use little r because that's going to be my variable. And so the rotational inertia just of this ring, just of this ring, is um, going to be, um, let's say it's going to be a very tiny rotational inertia. Here's why it's going to be so tiny of a rotational inertia because this is so thin that there's hardly any mass in there. So um, the di, we're going to say it's so tiny, it's di tiny, like, you know, it, it, it's almost zero. And it's almost zero because the, the mass of this little ring is dm. And that's because it's so thin. And then it's out there at distance r. Now r is not... Um, not infinitesimal. It's it's a, you know can be a big value. Okay, so that is and that's going to be squared be, because that's the we always square the distance that the mass is from the axis. Okay, so this is the i of the ring. I'm going to say i sub ring, and that's the dm. This is the dm of the ring. Okay, now I don't want to know the um, rotational inertia of the ring. I want to know the rotational inertia of the of the entire disk. And so the eye of the disk, that's going to be um, just the sum of all the, the eyes of the ring. So it's going to be the sum of all these. So I'll just switch these around. R squared dm. It's the sum of all those. Now, um, but we have a problem here because my differential is dm, but my variables are. See, as, as I go out to different rings, I have a different R. So my variables are, but my dm is my differential. So I have to change my differential to a dr. Okay, so that's the trick to doing this. 
So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, the idea that there's um, a density, a mass per area density. We'll call it sigma. It doesn't matter what we call it. Let's just call it sigma is the mass per area. And so it turns out that it's the same, sigma is the same for the disk as it is for the little ring. It's the same mass density because it's the same material. And so um, I can say that the sigma for the, for the whole disk is going to be m over um, the area pi r squared, pi capital R squared. But that's going to be equal to the the sigma for just the ring. So that's going to be dm times its area, uh, divided by its area. So its area here, this area, um, so that's a little tricky. Let's, what, what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to, can, in, our, in your mind, can you cut that right there, cut it, and let's roll it out. So we're going to cut that and roll it out. There it is. And so it's got a thickness dr, and it's got a um, a width, I suppose, of 2 pi r, 2 pi little r. See how that's like the circumference? So the area here, this little area, is going to be 2 pi r dr. There you have it. Okay, so now I'm going to solve for dm, and I'm going to put it into there, and then I'll solve my integral, and I'll be done. So let's see. Let's get rid of a pi. And then let's bring everything else over on the other side. So dm, apparently dm is equal to, oh, there's a, let's see, a 2m r over um, dr all over capital R squared. That's what dm is equal to. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to sub in there. So I of the disk, which is what I'm after, is going to be equal to um, R squared. And then for DM, I'm going to just transfer all this stuff up here. So DM is going to be 2, 2M little r dr all over capital R squared. And then... Um, I'm going to tell the integral to start adding it when r equals 0, little r equals 0. And don't stop adding these rings until you get to r equals big R. So now the math knows that when it's adding these up, these, these, little, these little rotational inertias up, it should go from 0 to capital R. All right, so now I just have to solve for this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all the all the constants out in front. So I is equal to bringing all the constants out. I got a 2m um, over r squared, and then um, inside my integral I have r cubed dr, and I'm going from zero to capital R. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this integral then. So this is I will equal 2m over r squared, capital R squared. And now to solve this, I'm going to raise this to the fourth power and then divide by 4. And so that's how you take an integral. And so that would be from 0 to um, uppercase R. Okay, let's go ahead and put in... Um, the uppercase R first. So we're going to get 2m over R squared. And I'm going to have um, R to the fourth over 4. Okay, minus. And now I'm going to put in the 0 into here. And so when I put in 0, I just get 0. So it looks like I is going to be, um, let's see, you can cancel out an R squared, and yeah, that's going to give us one half MR squared. All right, that's what we were after. That's the rotational inertia of a, of a solid disk that has a uniform mass density. All right, thanks for watching.
Bye.